Hello, my name is Michael Driscoll, and in this tutorial, you will be learning how to use Jupyter Notebook to create presentations. So, I like to create presentations with Jupyter Notebook because it allows me to run my code interactively, uh, kind of in a slide-by-slide -slide basis. So, to do this, uh, one easy way would be to um, install the RISE project. Um, let's go there quick and check out what that is. So go searching for Jupyter Rise. Uh, the current version is 5.6.1. And it basically uses a plugin with a Reveal JS in it to turn your Jupyter Notebook into a presentation software. Um, to install it, you can use um, pip or, or uh, conda. I think I already have it installed on my machine. Let's say we have uh, Python 3.8 and we want to install it. You just do this, pip 3.8-m pip install rise, all caps. It'll go and grab it and install it if I need it, if I need anything. As you can see, it installs a lot of stuff. And it takes a little bit too because there's so much to install. I think what I think if you install Jupyter Notebook first, um, Rise is, is like only one or two extra uh, dependencies to install. I must not have had Jupyter installed when I thought I did. Anyway, so now we're ready. So we should be able to write Jupyter Notebook, and it'll load up, and we can create a new notebook in here. And at this point, you should see a new button appear. So if this this button here is the enter exit rise slideshow button. This isn't normally there in a normal Jupyter Notebook install. So if you want to create create a, a presentation with Jupyter Notebook, um, we can do that. Let's see, I will call, call this uh, the rise project. And we need to go to um, view, cell toolbar, slideshow. Now we can set our slide type for each cell. So let's say we want this to be the front first cell and we use uh, markdown here. Um, let's learn about decorators. Alright, so that can be our first slide. Now you can have a choice of doing a sub slide or a skip or you can add note slides. I've never had much use for fragments. I'm not entirely sure what that's even for. But slide and subslide are your friends, and you'll probably use those the most. Um, some notebooks you have a lot of extra data in, and you don't want to delete the delete your cell, so you can just mark those uh, particular ones as skip if you want, and it'll skip right over those. But let's do this first. Let's do a couple slides. All right, I'll call this uh, slide one. Actually, let's have this one. No, I want to show this. Let's do slide one, make this a markdown slide, add another slide, do slide two, make this one markdown as well, make that a slide, and then I think we'll make a sub slide that actually has code in it. So let's see, we'll just call this x equals 12, and we'll print out x, and we'll make this a sub slide. All right, so now we have four slides, or four cells, and to turn them into slides, you just hit this button. So now we have the first slide. It starts on whatever slide is selected. So if I clicked on this, on the second slide, and hit Run, it'll run to the second slide. Okay, anyway, so we're here at the beginning. To move forward in your slideshow, you can press uh, the space bar, or you can use your arrow keys. I usually use the space bar. You can also go down and use your mouse and just click on, on next and previous. But if you want to just use keyboard, I recommend using uh, space bar and shift space bar to go backwards. Okay, so here we are. Looks like I forgot to run this slide so that it looks right. You can just hit shift enter uh, once you've selected it and it'll convert it to your proper markdown slide. Looks like I did that wrong there too, so we fixed that. 
And you'll note that when they are regular slides, when you progress through them, hitting spacebar or go backwards or shift spacebar, it slides to the right or left. But if it's a subslide, the slide will go uh, come up. So you see how that changes there? You'll also notice that the buttons change over here, so you can go up and down, up and down. Anyway, so how, now we have a, a code slide. You can run code slides by hitting uh, shift enter and it'll run it, which is really handy. So we can also run other commands in here and just do, and do interactive stuff in our, in our presentation, which is really handy. Um, I think, I don't remember for sure, but I think I have matplotlib installed. So let's see if this works. All right, so that's happy with that. Let's go look up a matplotlib um, example. So if we grab that and slap it in our in our cell, um, we can run that cell, and it will. You know, if I can get it to work right, you can run that cell, and it'll actually put the graph on there. And then you can play around with that graph and make it do different things, and just demonstrate uh, different different concepts like um, label name can change. And you run that, and you'll note that the name has changed over here. Though it's hard to see because the text is so small. Well, since this is a web page, you can just make it bigger using your web browser's uh, increase and decrease font. So some browsers you can hold Control and just scroll, and it'll get bigger or smaller. Or you maybe have to hit Control plus or minus, to, or Command plus or minus if you're on a Mac to make it get bigger or smaller. But that's, that's one of the benefits of running your presentation in Jupyter Notebook is that if you have a slide where something is too small, you can quickly make it bigger to show off something to the audience and then make it smaller again before you advance to the next slide. Um, if you need to exit your, your Jupyter Notebook, unfortunately exit doesn't work. Escape, your escape key doesn't work, so you have to go up and actually hit the exit key. But you know, that's the basics of creating a slideshow and doing a presentation with Jupyter Notebook and the RISE plugin. Um, I will point out, if we go back to RISE, they do have some customizations which I've never played with that much, but there's some presentation themes you can add. They'll change the colors. Um, they actually have transitions that they support. Um, you can choose where the beginning slide is. Uh, there's just like a couple of different settings you might want to go look at. You can set uh, width and height. I remember that there's a way to add a header and footer or a background image that can overlay. Um, I haven't played with those either, but um, you can check those out. It looks like Binder might have some examples. We can, we can see if we can get this to load up fairly quickly. Binder tends to be kind of slow. Let's see where we're at here. But anyway, hopefully this will show show how to do this. Just give it a minute here. Anyway, this is a way to, Binder provides a nice way to um, demonstrate your Jupyter Notebooks online without having to have someone install all of your things. All right, here we go. So yeah, when you run this, it adds an overlay. So you can see it has, it has these overlays on there, and I can, I've got this thing too big. But anyway, that's that's kind of how, what it looks like. That's a really generic example as well. But anyway, I would definitely uh, go and check out their the, the doc, Rise's documentation, so you can see what else you can do with Rise and make your presentations amazing. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line in the comments or send me an email uh, through my blog. Thanks again.